It's November 26, 2020. This is Rook. You can almost feel the collective gasp around the world when the news of the passing of a global icon zooms into our information platforms. And when that person is a legend who is being snatched from us too soon at the age of 60, and yet somehow not entirely surprisingly, there's a lot more to process. On the occasion of the death of football legend Diego Maradona, we are dedicating this episode of Rook to a sporting idol that was part of so many of our lives and whose remarkable skills, football prowess, and larger-than-life persona seem to particularly resonate with Iranians. We have a variety of voices here to assess and guide us through. This is a special edition, Remembering Maradona. I'm Gian Gameshi. This is Rook. Hi there, welcome to episode number 65 of Rook. Omidvar hastam ke mizun bashin. Hope you are doing all right wherever you are in the world. A special shout out to our American friends celebrating Thanksgiving this weekend. We are on our ongoing mission to build a, a new audiovisual encyclopedia of Iranian diaspora identity. We're coming to you on SoundCloud, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Telegram. And you can see all of our past episodes at our website and hub of all things Rook. Rook media.com where we have posted our most uh, recent editions there with um, Sonita Alizadeh, Parviz Tanavoli, Dr. Javad Mashriqi and more. Hi Shaya John. Durud. Groovy Shaya. <laughs> Durud. Durud. Yeah, Durud Gian, John. Merci. Hi, uh, hi. Uh, Shaya you? from Dang Show Khubi. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I mean, I'm a little. Uh, it's a sad couple of days, yes, as this yes, uh, uh, episode will attest yeah. to for us. Yeah, it's sad. It, it's it's been a whirlwind around here, Shai. Like we've been uh, getting ready for this. Uh, in the last 24 hours. Credit to the amazing Rook team. Mm -hmm. I see uh, Captain Reza there still pulling images for our YouTube. You know, um, folks out there, we had a very different show planned for this episode. Uh, interviews had been booked. Research had been done. Yeah. But yesterday, as sometimes can happen, fate and news in our respective feeds came uh, filtering out that would change the programming that we have for you. And uh, so we hope this will be something that speaks to many folks out there and, and our interests um, in the Iranian diaspora in, in particular. Um, and I guess I wanted to start by saying I'm a football fan. Yeah, uh, me too. That, I know you are. I know you are. And that, and that is football as in soccer, mm -hmm. as we also say in North America. And for the purposes of, of this program today, I thought I would set the lexicon straight that we will use the uh, more universal appellation football. So every time we say football, we mean soccer, soccer. for those of you. <laughs> um, and uh, did you play football? Oh, yeah, actually, my, uh, I was a good player. I, I, I think I still am a good oh, player. Oh, it's yeah. weird that we haven't played. Yes. We play, played each other just for fun, yeah. you know? Uh, I played for many years, and I still like to play a little. Uh, you, you know, I'm a, a lifelong Arsenal fan in I the know. English Premier League, yeah. and I basically look forward to each World Cup. I do count. I used to actually do countdowns to the World Cup <laughs> on an old show of mine. I'd say, okay, it's 241 days to the World Cup. You know, um, and uh, the World Cup is a funny thing for me because. My teams are, you know, Canada and Iran and, of course, England, where I was born. And those teams usually get eliminated. Like, there's <laughs> there's really no hope. I mean, Iran and Canada, you know, it's it's a, it's a miracle if we even yeah. get into the World Cup. And then, and then, although Iran did pretty well last time, but, yeah, yes. but and then, and then England, it's always some heartbreak. So, um, I am left to pick sides as it, as the rounds go further and further between the likes of, uh, Italy, Germany, Brazil, or Argentina. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've always been clear about who I think the legends are. And, 
for me, Diego Maradona was was a legend, and I, I think like many people out there. I can remember him watching him as a kid, wanting to be him, being in awe of him, wondering if or how sometimes he was even human. And and I actually remember that moment in real time in uh, in 1986 as a teen, uh, witnessing him scoring that goal of the century against uh, my um, beloved and beleaguered England. You know, uh, again, a goal that you've no doubt watched on YouTube many times. I'm sure. Yes. Do Do you have Um, any enemy team for example for me yeah. for many years Germany has that kind of role you know I don't yes. like yes that's weird too because a lot of uh, Iranians yeah, really I, like Germany I, I am Argentine I am a big oh, fan yes. of Argentina right and, and so the big foe is Germany for Argentina yes and Uh, I don't have it as much internationally. I definitely do in in the you know in the Premier League, for example. The Man uh. Manchester teams are such enemies <laughs> of Arsenal or Chelsea, you know, but yeah. or even Tottenham. But um, uh, anyway, listen, we realize we're not alone. I mean, given the outpouring of sadness and remembrances and tributes to Maradona around the world in the last uh, 24 hours, it was. Particularly interesting to note, there was this moment, Chai, where you and I and other people on the Rook team yesterday, as the news came out, we realized that our social media feeds were filling with people um, putting, posting pictures of Maradona, talking about Maradona, and a lot of them happened to be Iranians, some of them uh, back in Iran, and there appeared to be some kind of special connection for Iranians in the diaspora and in Iran with this this Argentinian pop culture and sporting icon. So mm -hmm. it raised the question, I mean, it seems obvious that there is, but is there? Is it just nonsense? As Chodam Daram Dad I mean, you know, you know, we we wondered this. So uh, we've decided to pursue this question on this uh, on this special and both as a tribute to the talented and troubled football hero Maradona, but as a journey into our own identity around this fallen icon as Iranians. Um, so Uh, in the next couple of hours, we wanted to invite a few guests from around the globe to give their thoughts on Maradona, his legacy, his life, his connection to those of us of Iranian descent. We're going to be joined by Mehrdad Ahmadpour in Toronto, Nader Davoudi in Tehran, Hos Zareh in San Francisco, Hossein Majid in Los Angeles, and Dr. Khosro Hamzeh in Chicago, all intimately connected to football in different ways, all with very much to say. And um, we hope you'll find this interesting and uh, kick a ball in our direction with comments and thoughts. If you do, maybe even subscribe, become a patron, or share this content too. Right, Shaya? Yes, yes. So uh, what else did I want? Oh, this episode will be in both English and Farsi. We, um, we will try to do some subtitles for the Persian parts, but since we're taping this uh, all at once here live, if you don't speak Persian, be aware that there are that the parts of this will be in Farsi, but we'll return to English as well, and we'll put up a subtitled version in the coming days as well. So, let's get to it, yeah? Yes. This is a Rook special, Remembering Maradona. It is in many ways a classic underdog tale. Maybe the most classic of rags to riches to ragged resolution, this story of Diego Maradona. He was an icon and an iconoclast, a rebel, a hero, a champion, and ultimately undeniably self-destructive. He was born into poverty and grew a persona bigger than life. Diego Maradona came into the world in 1960 and was raised in Villa Fiorito, a shanty town on the southern outskirts of Buenos Aires, Argentina. From a young age, he was inextricably linked to football, a game with which his name would become almost synonymous. It was clear his talents were heaven sent. He made his professional debut at just 15 years old, and by the time he was 22, signed to Barcelona for a then world record, five million pounds. He arrived in Naples, Italy in 1984 for another record-setting contract and started on the path to turning Napoli, a middling and unremarkable team, into champions. 
He had magic in his moves, an artistic style of play that had rarely been seen. He silenced his critics and some racists with sheer dominance of his game. And then it was in the 1986 World Cup that he distinguished himself as legendary seemingly single-handedly wielding his national team, Argentina, to the trophy. On the way, there was the controversial Hand of God score and the goal of the century as well, and of course, the golden ball as the tournament's best player. By the late 1980s, Maradona had transcended the sport and become a household name and a pop culture idol. You know, it's a funny thing when you think about how few people there are in existence that the entire world could recognize with just one name. There is no corner of the earth that doesn't know Maradona. Even people who barely ever watched a football game know his name. But the second half of his life was known more for notoriety than talents. Personal problems off the pitch led to arrests, controversy, even a ban from football in 1992. Diego Maradona had to come to terms with who he was without football, and he had no roadmap or experience to carve out that journey. His later years were marked by addiction issues, erratic behavior, near comical appearances, and a sad decline. He was always a rebel and somehow refused to be put in the box of a legend who might live out his days in some kind of social elegance. Nevertheless, he remained a hero to so many. His teammates almost always loved him and continued to. Other football icons revered him, and he had a common touch with ordinary folks who, like himself, came from modest means. FIFA designated him as co-player of the 20th century, along with Pele. He was simply one of the greatest ever in the world's greatest sport. Rest in peace, Diego. All right. Well, my first guest is a lifelong student of football, a big fan of football, and an expert of the game. Mehrdad Ahmadpour is an Iranian documentary filmmaker behind the award-winning doc Barrez Silence. He runs a football website in Farsi called Student of the Game, and he has done a series of beautiful videos called The Art of Football. And right now, Mehrdad Ahmadpour joins me from Toronto today. Hello, sir. Hi, Jian. How are you doing? I'm okay. It's nice to talk to you. I mean, I know just how much football uh, soccer means to you. What were your first thoughts when you heard the news that Diego Maradona, the, the legend, had died yesterday? Oh, it's, it's too sad. Uh, it's too sad. Um, you know, Jian, um, all of us uh, expected uh, of this news uh, uh, to, to hear this tragedy of Maradona death. Uh, sooner or later, uh, it's it's maybe because of uh, his lifestyle, but it's still shocking. It's still shocking because of his uh, his legacy. Yesterday, Pep Guardiola beautifully said, "It doesn't matter what he has done with his life; it's matter what he has done with our life." And uh, for me, what he has done for me, it's it's uh, just uh, making uh, a pure beauty, pure joy in my childhood at least let me ask you about that i mean because you are this lifelong football obsessive and you do a podcast and you've done films about football you've said that maradona was your hero as a kid growing up in iran i think it rashed to tell tell us about this yeah i i come from a northern part of iran uh, beside Caspian Sea, uh, you know, as a as a kid growing in eighties, I was born in nineteen eighty. Um, I don't have a clear memory of um, eighty six Mexico World Cup, uh, but I watched that historical match um, Argentina against England and uh, those uh, uh, Falkland history stories. If if you know that, uh, over and over I watched that game and those two goals, the hand of God and those incredible, um, exceptional uh, goal of century. Uh, my brother was supporting Argentina at that time. I clearly remember, but. Uh, but, you know, I clearly remember the World Cup 1990 Italy because uh, I was 10 at that time uh, making a magazine uh, like 
like a childhood thing with my cousin about a uh, world cup we cut the <laughs> newspapers and right. uh, make it and i still have it and um, i specifically remember the um, opening game uh, at that time uh, iran national tv decided to broadcast the game but with, with 30 minutes delay uh, of course uh, and um, we all gathered to one of my uh, friend's house uh, one of our neighbors uh, to uh, watch the game from uh, be- because they had access to Russian uh, broadcasting TV. Uh, uh, it was before satellite era, like big antennas. Right. And then we we watched the game from Moscow uh, TV, some <laughs> okay. something like that. Right. Uh, we watched the yeah we watched the ceremony, uh, like opening ceremony of the game uh, between Argentina and Cameroon, if you remember, yeah. and. Uh, uh, it was like yesterday for me uh, because uh, you know Maradona stepped to the pitch. Everything was uh, was ready to start to kick off. Referee was almost about uh, blowing his whistle, uh, but suddenly Maradona took the ball and showed some some of his beautiful skills with his shoulders, uh, with his feet um, in front of the crowd. Not the the, the venue crowd, all, all over the world watch that. And uh, um, he didn't need to show his skills because he was very famous. He was after um, the World Cup 86. He was just... Uh, I thought he just wanted to show some art, some beauty to to entertain people. Mm. And that was the moment that because, you know, that I like uh, unconsciously, I like art and football at the same time. Uh, That was the moment that I uh, uh, I found that this guy uh, is an artist, not just a footballer. He's he 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 knows what is beauty. Well, that would become a fateful World Cup for Maradona, because that, that, of course, is the World Cup where he helps Argentina defeat Italy in the semifinals and then becomes persona non grata in Italy after that. And, uh, and uh, you could trace the downfall of Maradona from, from that World Cup. Um, it, it's funny that you were, you were watching it on a 30-minute delay. I guess those were the days when you couldn't, uh, nobody was going to text you the score. <laughs> in, no, in 1990 no, there was no danger you would find out what was happening before it uh, you know there are some reporters there are some commentators uh, they were cheating and they knew their result and they, they when they doing their commentary they were trying in iran i mean they were trying to uh, to predict uh, the, the game uh, to show that we are very like uh, fantastic um, and we, we know everything about the game uh, but you know it's it, it was funny uh, not funny actually but it was uh, interesting because i i i'm supporting germany uh, and uh, I, I was a, a fan of germany I, it has been like 30 years and uh, but i was never uh, like um, supporting a team which maradona played in but uh, it was uh, he was a very uh, it was so. Uh, mm, uh, I I couldn't say was. I I I have to say is. He's a very respectable uh, rival for me, always. But you, I thought you had said. Did you say to me once that when you were a kid in Rash, that the, the kids were were imagined that they were Maradona when they, when you were playing football? Um, and and you know, it's interesting to me. I I'll, I'll put this question to you because you would you would have a sense of this uh, doing the 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 Farsi football website, etc. I mean, all Maradona, almost all the Iranians in my social media feeds. Um, have been posting about Maradona over the last 24 hours, literally. I mean, it's a little strange. Yes, we are a people who love football, but Maradona is not Iranian. Why do you think Iranians feel a connection with this, or at least some Iranians feel a, a connection with this uh, this icon? Uh, okay, it's two questions. Let me talk about Rasht first and then go back to connection between Iranian and Maradona. You know, if you remember, mm, uh, we had an earthquake in north of Iran, right in the middle of the World Cup, 1990. Uh, and it was a horrible uh, earthquake and uh, everything has been ruined. Uh, and then the, mm, all we had was football because it was right in the middle of World Cup. And then we just followed the mm, games um, in like our backyards because we, we 
couldn't go back to our houses. And then um, uh, Maradona was one of the biggest uh, figure, biggest hero of that time. Uh, and especially for uh, people in Rasht or in that area, uh, it was very phenomenal because uh, uh, they could mix these uh, two, uh, like the, the tragedy of earthquake and the beauty of football together. Uh, um, it, it was a great beauty. By the way, speaking of great beauty, I um, I have a story. I really want to um, tell it to you. I remember it was Oscar um, 2012 or 13 or whatever. I the don't Oscars, remember. The, the Academy Awards? Yeah, Academy yeah. Awards. And um, uh, Paolo Sorrentino, Italian filmmaker, won the Oscar for um, Best Foreign Language Film. Yes. He went up there to um, give his speech. And he said, um, with his beautiful Italian accent, he said, uh, thank you, Academy. Thank you, Italia. Thank you, Federico Fellini. Thank you, Diego Armando Maradona. <laughs> and uh, they asked him that, why are you mentioning Maradona? And he said, I'm a Napolitan. I'm, I'm from <laughs> Naples. Yes. Uh, and he brought beauty to our city for four years. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. He brought uh, beauty for uh, our childhood, um, uh, our uh, black and white affected by war and earthquake childhood. For, for me, he was arguably best ever football. But in terms of connection between Iranian uh, and Maradona, uh, you know, uh, there are some similarities between the Iranians and Latin American peoples. They both are like warm blooded. They are uh, uh, they they like rebel uh, characters, and uh, uh, they like uh, um, this 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 kind of charisma. Uh, you can see that in the in their uh, lifestyle, uh, and. Uh, I personally think that what he has done with his life, I mean, the controversies, the drug use and everything, couldn't consider to be as a very bad thing. Uh, even some of them, uh, like, mm, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to talk, um, like, uh, from my point of view, sure, sure. but, uh, but uh, it's because <laughs> it's kind of controversial. I think uh, what he has done with himself is what many people exactly want to do with themselves, but they don't, uh, they're afraid to You to mean the, wi the wild the, lifestyle? The, yeah, the, the, the wild the, the lifestyle. The prostitutes yeah, and yeah. the drugs and the mafia. Every, and the everything, yeah. People are dreaming about it, but, but uh, they don't dare to do this, to have this lifestyle. Uh. They're afraid to, to, com to, to confess. And so Ma Maradona sort of became an avatar for that. He became somebody for us to, to watch and, and in a sense celebrate in terms of that lifestyle. And, yeah, and all embodiment of, of all those things, yeah. But, but uh, well, uh, okay, well, let me just ask you about that because since we're talking about it, I, I, I do want to take one step back and ask you about him as a footballer. But uh, let me just say, I mean, he, as you say, he was no stranger to controversy. You know, from on the pitch, the famous hand of God, to the, the off the pitch troubles with the law and the drugs and the mafia. As a soccer, as a football um, analyst yourself, you know, d d does, and, and with those you've been talking about for the last, talking to for the last 24 hours around you, does he? his troubled personal life take anything away from his status as opposed to someone like Pelé? Um, not at all, I think. You know, yesterday I was browsing on internet uh, to uh, see um, people, what are people saying about Maradona? And I, uh, I've i seen a very surreal and absurd uh, condolence from Johan Cryof, who has been... Uh, dead for like, like for four years i guess uh, and uh, uh, he's already dead but his uh, his social media his twitter his uh, instagram is still active by somebody else i guess and he sent his condolence to to maradona uh, and he said rest in peace diego something like that uh, it was very surreal for me um, the two uh, rebels to to uh, dead rebels are talking together in social media like <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and and you know for me uh, it was a it was end of an era uh, 
end of an era of this kind of rebel heroes like Georgie Best, like Dr. Socrates, um, who's dead like seven, ten years ago, I guess. Uh, Johan Krajev, who smokes um, in, in the locker room, if you know right, that. Right, right. And then uh, Maradona. And we moved from them to uh, the new uh, heroes, uh, like very clean, very like politically correct and everything like Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I'm not saying that I, I don't like it. It's not um, just in football, in, in everything. Sure, we moved from, sure, yeah. uh, we moved from uh, uh, Fidel Castro, like leaders from F Fidel Castro or Che Guevara to, uh, to Trudeau or uh, Obama. I'm not saying that I don't like Obama or Trudeau. I love Trudeau. I love Obama. But uh, I'm saying that the world has been changed and it's it's end of an era for me. And uh, the era that we, like from uh, the uh, compact crowd in Woodstock to this socially distanced people who uh. watch uh, who watch online concerts. Uh, you know, it's the meaning of Maradona for me. That's why that I'm saying that these controversies belongs to the era that we could we could accept. Right. We could accept it and we could remember it. By the way, in the, in the middle of all the remembrances yesterday, somebody also sent me a text, maybe anticipating that we we're uh, doing this episode, saying, you know, Maradona once sent a jersey to Ahmadinejad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is yeah, yeah. classic Iranian. Like, <laughs> let's forget about everything else the guy has done. He may have sent a jersey to Ahmadinejad, in which case we should condemn him. Um, yeah, you, you, to be honest, he didn't know anything about politics. <laughs> He's just unconscious. And then, because uh, um, he's uh, the, the friends of Chavez, he thinks that maybe they are like, right, yeah, th right. Th this kind of thing. But. Uh, I still love him. Well, the, the part of that is that Maradona's story. I mean, as I said a little bit in the intro, that Maradona's story is a, is a, that of a coming, you know, literally started from the from from the bottom. Uh, you know, like I mean, he is he uh, you know he was a a working class small town. Even by the time he gets to Napoli, the reason why people can identify with him is because he's the he's the working guy. He's the car guy. He's the regular guy. He's the guy yeah. from 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 below who has become the star. He was never a, an aristocrat. Um, and so you have to sort of put his whole life into that context, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the reason. He, he came from a family of, like, I think he was the 13th kids of the family, like some, something like that. Very poor. And, uh, you know, you, you remember when uh, when uh, our goalkeeper, uh, I mean, Iranian goalkeeper Ali Reza Baron Van saved Ronaldo's um, penalty in the World Cup, in the last World of Cup. Of course. Everybody said the story as he's a very, like he comes from a very uh, poor family. He's a, a working class. He's, he's a, a like, type of Karagar uh, family. And then uh, they try to tell this story to convince people that if you try, you can reach to that point. And that's everybody's dream, I, I, I think. And uh, Maradona uh, leaves that dream. Well, let me on that note then ask you a final question um, as someone who watches football so closely um, and who says, you know, he was one of the greatest ever or the greatest ever you said earlier. I mean, he was named the co player of the 20th century by FIFA. Uh, why was, as a player, because he's this unremarkable guy in terms of his stature, he's not particularly speedy he's not he's not tall he's he's kind of stocky why was he so remarkable um i have to go back to my first sentence because he's he's an artist he's he when he, like like the way he plays is is extremely beautiful when you watch it you you're blown away like, like it, it's uh, for me it's arguably the greatest ever because uh, he has all of them like um, pace, technique, beauty, vision, everything. And uh, specifically, his character is very important. It, that, that's the thing that I think Lionel Messi doesn't have it, and uh, Maradona has it, I guess. Like the leadership character. Merta Adamapur, it's a it's a pleasure talking to you. It's a sad occasion, uh, uh, but your your passion is is palpable. I can I can feel it. I can hear it. And your words have been uh, as beautiful as Maradona's uh, playing. I thank you for this today. 
Thank you, thank you, Gian. It's my pleasure to be here, and uh, hope to see you in a better, like, like to talk to you in a better occasion. Indeed, talk to you soon. Merci. Khodaf. Thank you soon. Khodaf. Mehrdad Ahmad Poor is an award-winning documentary filmmaker and runs a football website called The Art of Football. He joined us from Toronto today. This is our Rook special, Remembering Maradona, coming to you on SoundCloud, Telegram, Spotify, iTunes, Instagram, and YouTube. Well, my next guest is an award-winning photojournalist. Nader Davoudi is the first Iranian sport photographer to cover the FIFA World Cup. He did so in 1994. And his photo of Jordan Lechkov's goal against Germany won him the Best Sport Picture of the Year Award in the annual Iranian Sports Photo Contest. He was the publisher of the Tamasha Garon football magazine for 10 years. And Nader Davoudi joins us from Tehran, Iran right now. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? It's a great pleasure to get to talk to you on this program, although it's, it's sad news for football fans when a legend dies. Thank you for doing yeah. this. Thanks for having me. Nader John, what, what, what went through your mind? You're there in Tehran. What, what, you, I guess you found out the news like we all did yesterday about the passing of Diego Maradona. What was the first thing that you thought of? Well, actually, for me, it, it was not like a shock because, you know, look at his um, life. It seems that you're always uh, waiting for something, you know, surprising, right. even his death. Right. Even he's there. انگار ما منتظرش بودیم که این خبر بیاد. متاسفانه 10 15 سال اخیر زندگیش خیلی بد بود دیگه. You say that partly because of the, the, the lifestyle, the drugs and the, the unhealthy kind of way he was carrying on. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, you, you, you are in Tehran right now. I, I wonder if you, I don't know it's, if it's possible to, to be able to gauge this at all, even during a pandemic when maybe a, a lot of people out are, aren't out on the streets and talking. But do you sense many people are talking about this in Iran, that, that this oh. was a big deal? Yeah, almost everybody. Almost everybody. For example, we, we usually uh, chat our friends in you know group chats, like Telegram or WhatsApp. And everybody just talk about Maradona, share pictures, share memories. And yeah, it's like, it's like Maradona belongs to Iran. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, a friend of mine joked earlier, Mega as Abadan Nabud. He, he, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> he comes from I, Abadan, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, we, we have a kind of expression in Iran that Ossad Asadi ro bechas, Maradona ro welkon. و یه بازی بود که ایران با ژاپن داشت تو مقدماتی جام جام 98 فرانسه و تو دقیقه اول یه گل زد استاد اسدی به تیم ما آها. و بعد از همون موقع خیلی هم میگفتن آقا مارادونا رو ول کن استاد اسدی رو بچست یعنی حتی تو اکسپریشن های ما هست yeah, yeah, he's waved his way into Persian expressions um, exactly. I, I, I know that uh, I'm going to ask you about what you thought of him as a player and, and with your mm. magazine over the years obviously you would have covered him but I know you had the chance to meet him I think at the 2006 World Cup Anandar what was your impression of Maradona when you actually met him in person. اولین لحظه‌ای که دیدمش اولا شوکه شدم قرار نبود مارادونا اونجا باشه نه به عنوان بازیکن نه به عنوان مربی من توی در واقع میکزون بودم جایی که خبرنگارا وای میسن و معمولا مربی و بازیکن ها میان و یهو دیدم دور و بر من همه چیز ریخ به هم یه اتفاقی افتاد یه نفر اومده تا برگشتم ببینم کیه مارادونا رو دیدم که از قضا مثلا تو دو قدمی من بود ولی تا میخواستم دوربینم و بیارم بالا عکاسی کنم یه جمعیتی ریخته بودن محاصرش کرده بودن عکسی که تو اینستاگرام گذاشتم تقریبا این حال هوا شون میده Did you actually talk to him or did you just saw him? نه متاسفانه من اینکه زود از اون قسمت بردم برای اینکه قرار بود در واقع فقط از اونجا عبور کنه و بره تو بخشی از مراسم شرکت کنه 
بنابراین فقط یه لحظه از کنار هم رد شدی I think this was 2006 was uh, yani yeah, mazad mikhan but I think it was bloated maradona right it was uh, uh, it wasn't it wasn't playing fit maradona درسته درسته اصلا در واقع فقط اونجا به عنوان یه فیگور معروف اونجا به عنوان یه سلبریتی فوتبال یو یو روت یو منشن اینستاگرام یو روت کوایت ا بیوتیفول پست ابات هیم یسترداي اند این ایت یو کالد هیم ا ریبل talk to me about uh, about how being a rebel may have made him a great player but also perhaps made his life unravel in his final decades i i i think of this um this documentary that was done on him that hbo documentary and there's a moment in the documentary where the um where the where his longtime coach says you know diego is a lovely boy maradona is this uh you, you know this uh, this crazed kind of uh high on himself Uh, bigger than life personality i prefer diego and maradona says to him yeah but maradona is the guy who got here you know he's the guy mm-hmm. who so tell me about what you mean when you talk about him as a rebel yeah for the injara yeah for the طولانی تر جواب میدم چون باید یه خورده برگردیم به زندگی مارادونا و بچگیش of course. ممنونم بچگیش توی توی یه فقری تو محله های خیلی پایین کم درآمد بزرگ شد و این باعث شد به اعتقاد من که در واقع وقتی به شهرت رسید شهرت و اونجوری که معمولا سلبریتی ها میخوان هندل کنن هندل نکرد در واقع انگار همیشه خاطرات بچگیش و فقرش و مردمی که از توی اونا اومده بود بیرون این همیشه باهاش بود و ما تو لایف استایلش یا توی حتی یه جاهایی که تظاهر میکنه بیشتر به نظر من به پولیتیکال ویو اینا رو میبینیم مثلا نزدیک شدنش به نوع تفکرات چپ و اینا بیشتر از این که واقعا ریشه داشته باشه در مغزش به امانی آدم یه جور واکنش نسبت به ای که توش بزرگ شده بود و این فاصله رو از بچگی تا, تا رسیدنش به قله های شهرت و ثروت احساس میکرد و این باعث شده بود که توقیان کنه این به نظر من یه جور روانشناسی فردیش بود ولی تو بازیش هم اینجوری بود یعنی کاری که مثلا تو بازی با انگلیس کرد که خیلی الان آیکونیک شده در مورد مارادونا اگه یادتون باشه تو اون سالا بین انگلستان و آرژانتین جنگ بود سر مجمع جزایر مالویناس یا فالکلند فالکلند آره و انگلیسی ها در واقع توی جنگ نظامی قلبه کرده بودن تو جزایر مستقر بودن و آرژانتینیا احساس حقارت میکردن و از غذا این بازی رسید به هم تو این دوتا بازی ولی انگار تو تیم آرژانتین اون سال فقط مارادونا بود که میخواست انتقام بگیره بقیه یه تیم هم بازی میکرد ولی اون کسی که میخواست بازی رو دراره مارادونا بود و اتفاقا تو اون جام جهانی که آرژانتین قهرمانی رو میگیره با مارادونا واقع از همون جام هم سویچ اصلی مارادونا آن میشه یعنی از همون بازیه که مارادونا انگار خودش هم متوجه میشه میتونه به هر وسیله ای بازی رو در آره واقعا پس بنابراین اگه فرض کنیم موتیویشنش در واقع یک یه پس زمینه یه سیاسی و ناسیونالیستی داره و میخواد به اصطلاح از یک کشوری که کشور توسعه نیافته ایه به نسبت بیاد مثلا دماغ انگلیسی ها رو به خاک به ماله و فقط با فوتبال میشه این کار کرد چون به قول بابی چارتون یه جمله معروف داره میگه فوتبال جنگ در زمان صلحه آه. و اینو زمانی گفت که فینال جام جهانی 1966 بود انگلیس و آلمان در یه فاصله کوتاه از پایان جنگ جهانی دوم yes. مقابله هم قرار گرفته بودن و آلمان ها تو ویمبلی بازی میکردن و در واقع همین همین جمله همیشه رو تو فوتبال بوده فوتبال جاییه که میتونن ملت ها در واقع هم مبارزه کنن بدون اینکه بجنگن و این اتفاق به نظر من توی ز... کاراکتر مارادونا ازش یه توقیانگر ساخته بود که چون میدونست یه توانایی داره که خیلی با... یعنی در واقع مثل واقعا یه سوپر هیرو بود میدونست میتونه 
گیم چینجر باشه و اصلی ترین آدمی باشه که این اتفاق رو رقم میزنه توی اون زمین و به همین باعث شده بود بیرون زمینم دیگه قابل مهار نبود هم. و از همون جاها بود که دعواش با فیفا و مقامات بالای فوتبال آغاز شد چون دیگه تحویلشون نمیگره well, well it's it's interesting that you mentioned that i mean that it's very important the era of the uh, argentine british international dispute and where soccer or football plays in, into that and maradona the argentinian team playing the english team and but this happens again and again in maradona's life even the act as he went when he was transferred at a record price of course again to napoli in 1984 it was almost that was almost an act of rebellion itself to, to join Napoli instead of Juventus or, or or one of the bigger cities and Napoli being sort of a downtrodden city in, in Italy in the south uh, uh, I mean downtrodden by their own standards I don't mean to, to say anything bad about uh, uh, the, the, the Neapolitans but they but but he he then has this incredible career in in napoli um but it, by the 1990 world cup uh when they're facing italy argentina's facing italy and he says I want Italians to support um, the Argentinian team. <laughs> and then he, in the semifinals, defeats the Italians. He becomes an enemy in Italy. So, and this feels like a microcosm of his whole life, being loved and hated. Can you speak to that, the story of Maradona? Absolutely. <laughs> در واقع ونیو بازی ها قبل از اینکه بازی ها آغاز بشه تعیین میشه و تنز روزگار یا آیرونی روزگار اینه که ایتالیا و آرژانتین تو نیمه نهایی میخورن به هم ولی بازی تو ناپله right. بنابراین مردم ناپل همه عاشق مارادونا هم تنها کسی که اومده بعد از 90 سال به ناپل هویت داده تو لیگ ایتالیا قهرمان کرده اینا رو در مقابل تیمای ثروتمند و به مردم اون شهر در واقع یه غرور داده تو کشورشون اما حالا مردم باید شاهد این باشن که نشنال تیمشون داره بازی میکنه در مقابل مارادونا مارادونا یه شیطنت کرد و گفت ناپل ایتالیا نیست و در واقع از همینجا دعواها شروع شد ما باید زمنان دقت کنیم که به عنوان فکت اینو میگم نمیخوام به عنوان یه چیز منفی بگم ولی باید دقت کنیم که به هر شکل ایتالیا معروف به کشور مافیا دیگه یعنی شما در واقع حتی اخیرا در مورد فساد فوتبال ایتالیا اطلاعات بسیار زیادی منتشر شد و تیمای خوب ایتالیا به دستهای پایین تر سقوط کردن به اینکه تنبیه بشن ولی دقت کنیم که همه اینا تقریبا 15 20 بعد از بلایی که سر مارادونا آوردن در واقع اتفاق افتاده مناشی نیست که مارادونا زندگی شخصیش پاک بود از این خطاها نه زندگی مارادونا شبیه بسیاری از سوپر استارای فوتبال نبوده مثلا مثل بیکن بایر مثل پله مثل کرایوف تیپیکال در واقع سوپر استارایی که تقریبا همه چیزشون توی میدون و بیرون میدون شبیه همه و مثلا رول مودل هم right. مارادونا درست برخلافش بود ولی به خاطر همین قدرتی که تو زمین داشت تمام اینستیتوشن ها سکیورش کرده بودن و ترمیح میدادن وارد مسائل خصوصیش نشن right. بنابراین در واقع بهش باج میدادن and when the institutions uh... left him he was left alone and you know started to that was the beginning of the downfall yes و حتی بیشتر و حتی بیشتر مثلا مدیام علیهش شد حتی کلابش ترکش کرد یعنی خیلی نکته مهمیه که خودش میگه میگه وقتی وارد ناپ شدم 75 هزار نفر اومده بودن استقبال من تقریبا بیش از ظرفیت ورزشگاه ناپ ولی ناپل میرفت حتی از باشگاه هیچ کس نرفت که بعد رقش کنه و این تنها خارج شد اینجا آغاز در واقع دیستروی شدن مارادوناس yes. برمیگرده بعدن به فوتبال ولی هیچ وقت دیگه نمیتونه خودشو پیدا کنه
Mother, you were the man behind a well-known football magazine for a long time. You've covered everyone. I want to ask you what you thought it was about Maradona's skills, his talents. I mean, despite the fact that he's not particularly tall or fast, he, he's not. you wouldn't sort of look at him and go, that's going to be the best footballer ever. Uh, mm-hmm. What was it about him? What was the magic sauce? You know, um, Mehrdad Ahmadpour, who just preceded you on this program, said he thought Maradona was the consummate artist. He calls him an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it about Maradona that, even when you mention the other greats, um, mm-hmm. that elevates him to possibly the greatest ever? Okay. Before I answer the question, I have to say something about ما مجله تماشاگران رو در می آوردیم ما یک بار روی تماشاگران رو جلدش یه عکس از مارادونا زدیم و اون شماره ما نایاب بود همش فروش رفت و جالب ما بعدا وقتی میخواستیم صحافی کنیم دوره کامل مجله رو اون مجله رو خودمون هم نمیتونستیم پیدا واو. کنیم این, این برمیگره به اون سوال در مورد محبوبیتش تو ایران yeah. و واقعا سری که داشت این محبوبیت در مورد بازیش من میخوام اینو بگم بازیکنهای کوتاه قد و ریز اندام توی فوتبال بازیکنهای مهم میشن معمولا چون فوتبال یه بازیه که با پا انجام میشه برخلاف تقریبا تمام ورزش هایی که تو آمریکای شمالی محبوبن و تو تمامش توپ با دست سر و کار داره میخواد بیسبال باشه فوتبال آمریکایی باشه بسکتبال باشه تمام این ورزش ها که تو آمریکای شمالی محبوبن همه با دست تو فوتبال با پاه بنابراین بازیکن های ریزنقش موفقترن چون پاهای کوتاه دارن و قدرت دیریبلینگشون میره بالا و در فوتبال اون چیزی که یه بازیکن جدا میکنه از بقیه قدرتش برای عبور کردن از بازیکن مستقیمه و چون مارادونا میتونست از چند نفر عبور کنه و دیریبل بزنه به خاطر همین ریزه بودنش این خیلی متفاوتش کرده بود یه چیز دیگه هم که خیلی متفاوت کرده بود مارادونا رو این بود که روش خیلی خطا میشد یعنی مارادونا رو خیلی میزدن ولی آسیب نمیدید و بلا فاصله بلند میشد و بدن خیلی قوی داشت و این بهش yes. کمک میکرد yes. تو این که در واقع دور نمونه از فوتبال و این باعث شد که در همون مدتی که بود یه تداوم و یک نواختی داشت مثلا من یادآوری میکنم اینو اخیرا یکی از کارشناسام گفت جام جهانی 1990 فکر میکنم بود کامرون بود و آرژانتین و توی اون بازی کامرونیا خیلی زدن مارادونا رو و بعضی از خطاها جوری بود که من خودم یادم بازی رو که میدیدم فکر میکردم دیگه بعد از این لگدی که خورده اینو میبرن از زمین بیرون <تصفيق> تو نمیتونه بلنشه و عجیب درجا پا میشد یعنی مارادونا حتی جز بازیکنهای نبود احساس کنه برای گرفتن اتنشن دوربین های تلویزیون باید یه مدتی رو زمین بخوابه انگار تمام وجودش آماده بود برای اینکه بلا فاصله بعد از خطا بلند شه و تو بازی روی بقیه رو کم کنه و این دو تا ویژگی به نظر من متفاوتش کرده بود یه نکته باید بگم سه تا گل برجسته تاریخ فوتبال دنیا که انتخاب شده توسط فیفا یکیش مال مارادوناست از اون سه تا گل و اون دو تا گل دیگه به خاطر حرکات تیمی در فوتبال انتخاب شد گل مارادونا صرفا به خاطر مهارت فردیش انتخاب شد که همین گل معروفش به انگلیسه در واقع تو اون گل ما چیزی که میبینیم یه فوتبال تک نفره میبینیم بر علیه یکی از شایسته ترین و رد بالاترین تیمای جهان که انگلستانه yeah. یعنی باید دقت کنیم مارادونا وقتی توپ از تو زمین خودش میگیره yeah. و yeah. میره yeah. میزنه تو دروازه داره از لای بازیکنهای تیم ملی انگلیس عبور میکنه yes. The goal of the century دیگه دقیقا دقیقا Um, Nader, it's such a it's such a pleasure talking to you and 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 your insights. Let me end off where we started, and um, when we talk about the legacy of Diego Maradona, despite the um, all of his personal struggles, and even as you say, the expectation that it's it's almost not a surprise that unfortunately his life has been terminated, given the kind of lifestyle he was leading. But despite that, his legacy, uh, both as a football player and as a, I guess as a 
pop culture icon. You are sitting in mm-hmm. Tehran. What can mm-hmm. you tell us about the kind of things that people are saying about him in Iran and the way you believe he will be remembered? به نظر من مارادونا برای ما تو ایران چون بر میگرده به خاطرات ما در دهه شست شمسی هشتاد میلادی دهه شست در ایران باید یادتون باشه دهه که ما درگیر جنگ با عراقیم جامعه ما یه جامعه غمگینه تقریبا جامعه توش رنگ نیست سیا سفیده رسانه های گروهی خیلی فعال نیستن و در واقع انترتینمنت اینداستری نداریم ما بعد از انقلاب و تنها چیزی که مثل یه روزنه ما رو به یه دنیای رنگی قشن کنه گهگاه فوتباله اونم در اصری که رسانه های گروهی گسترش پیدا نکردن مثل الان که ما بتونیم راحت از هر طریقی خودمون رو به فوتبال نزدیک کنیم right. پس ما بس منتظر بمونیم مثلا جام جهانی برسه و جام جهانی پخش تلویزیونی بشه تا توش یه نفسی بکشیم و از زیر فشارای سنگین ده شست خودمون رو آزاد کنیم حالا وقتی میشینیم جلوی این تلویزیون و این جام جهانی چیزی که توش میبینیم و به صورت یک مثلا جادوگر داره خودشو به رخ ما میکشه مارادوناست یعنی وسط تمام اون تیما همه منتظرن موقع بازی آرژانتین برسه تا مارادونا رو تماشا کنن و مارادونا اون سال به خاطر بازیایی که کرد تونست در واقع به ماها این فرصت رو بده که ما بازیاشو کامل ببینیم یعنی از افتتاحیه تا اختتامی فینال یعنی شانس اینو داد که ما از دیدن بازیش محروم نشیم به نظر من به همین دلیل بود که خیلی تو ایران جا بر خودش باز کرد چون مردم میگشتن دنبال قهرمانای میدونی واقعی تر دیگه ب- یه کسی که با یه چیزی شبیه به فان بیاد تو زندگی هاشون. و به نظر من به همین دلیل بود که مارادونا اومد تو اوجش توی جامعه جنگ زده غمگین درخشید و تو خاطره ها موند it is so beautifully said and it makes so much sense uh, and it's and it's quite profound and it is a great pleasure to have you um, as part of this special i hope to see you soon and talk to you uh, again and have you back on the program nader jan merci for this thank you mamnunam jian kheli wais khoshali man bud bad gap zadan khodafiz Nader Davoudi is an award-winning photojournalist and was the publisher of the Tamasha Garon football magazine for many years. He joined us from Tehran today. This is our Rook special, Remembering Maradona, coming to you on Telegram, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Instagram. My next guest is a San Francisco-based renowned chef. Throughout his 25-year-plus career, Chef Hos Zare has held leadership positions in prominent restaurants, including Aromi, Zare Sacramento, and Bistro Zare. But also, Chef Hos grew up in Tabriz, where he played football in local teams and was selected to the national youth team. He was offered to play for the second division team of Stuttgart, but he turned down the offer because he wanted to go to San Francisco. Currently, he is executive chef of Bon Appetit Management at Google. And right now, Chef Hos Zare joins me from San Francisco. Hello, sir. Good morning. Hello. It's always a pleasure to be in your company, sir. <laughs> it's always great to have you back on the program. Thank you. You know, I thought of you almost right away when I when I read the news about Maradona because I know how much football has meant to you throughout your life. I mean, you are a well-known, celebrated chef in San Francisco and around the world, but you were a football player and a lover of the game. 
Uh, Haas, what went through your mind when you heard about the passing of Diego Maradona yesterday? Well, uh, the, when you wake up in the morning, you see the news, you, of course, it makes you upset. But if you had asked me this question about 10, 15 years ago, my answer would be completely different. But for me, he's not dead. He might physically might be dead, but he is in everybody's heart. And look at the hair on the wall right now. Doesn't matter what country, what nationality, what gender, everybody is uh, just praising him, talking to him. And that's not just because of his soccer. It was soccer, but what his, the way he was. So he, for me, he might be physically is not with us anymore. But he will be spiritually with our heart forever. And anytime you watch a soccer game, uh, automatically you're going to remember his beauty of what he brought uh, to full. So basically, uh, people remember him um, uh, and as a soccer player and, um, and a human he was. And uh, so uh, they, they will remember as he did what he did to football, what, not what he did to himself. He sacrificed his youth, youngest, for the football, and he made the football more. Uh, it was popular, but it, because of him, a lot of people uh, uh, got into football. And you want to be the a future and not a Maradona. And not many people they can accomplish that. Let me. I'm, I'm going to ask you about you what you just referred to there, which is what he did on the pitch versus who he was off the pitch and some of the the controversies and the lifestyle. But uh, you said something interesting there. You said if if it was 15 years ago, your answer would have been different. Why? What What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I, uh, this is personal. I came to terms with myself to accept the death. We can, one day we came to life. One day we're going to die. Especially after my parents did. I was in shock. I didn't know why we uh, we lose people. But right now, you know what? I want, even tomorrow if I die, I want people to celebrate. They put their favorite music, favorite memories from me, and celebrate what we had, memories. Not to cry. I know as a human being, we are emotional people. But we have to turn the table around to accept the fact of the life. And what is we leave behind us the most important. And that's the glory beauty of the life for me right now. When I see somebody is not anymore with us, but I look at his legacy, what he has left behind. We know that Maradona obviously had some some demons. I mean, he uh, that led him to um, a some a self destructive lifestyle uh, um, throughout his life, and certainly in, in in recent decades. It's interesting because the two previous guests so far, when I've asked them what what, what was the first thing that went through your mind, is they said, "Well, uh, to be honest, I wasn't that surprised." Um, and and you know, I, I, I was speaking with. Uh, uh, our friend Maz Jabrani yesterday because he's a I knew he was a football fan so we were, we traded messages commiserating about uh, Maradona and he said the same thing you know I'm surprised he he lasted as long as he did um, because his uh, you know you kind of took a look at him in the last uh, um, three decades and 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 thought well this is not a healthy person um, does that somehow sully or or um, distort or or change his legacy of how great a football player he was for you in my book no he will be always diago he will be always the uh, the, the player i remember he has impacted me in my personal in my life to be honest with you tw- three times actually and uh, it doesn't you don't have to play soccer to lose his leadership and his teammate player and his glory and how he was perfection to bring into your own personal life like career as a chef and um, I look at him as how much he sacrificed for soccer and he gave his Ruth away. He, you, he didn't have, a, uh, he was always in the field, he was praised, everybody wants something, piece of him. Yes. So I don't think so he had a, a normal Ruth, uh, Ruth uh, so Javani. So, but it was his choice and he had a glory, but eventually gets you, we are human being. And, um, and it's just, uh, for me, like I say, he will be always for me is not a role model, but he has like, for example, when I was went to high school, I promised my parents not play any more soccer folks on school. But because of his watching his playing, it got my blood blo- uh, boiling. And then I next thing I know I was in a meeting sitting the first year after high school in my soccer team, uh, football team meeting. And I played. And the second time it happened when I came to United States, I was lonely i was homesick it was a uh, 86 and uh, it was world cup and he watching him play it make me like home again watching him on the tv in the united states my first six months and at the time i was offered to play kicker for the american football 
But then I look at myself, I was stupid if I would have, I turned my uh, mind and start playing against soccer here. So he has always been, um, again, uh, uh, not, you don't talk about it unless unfortunately people die, but he has affected a lot of people. Yes. Uh, a lot of people want to be like him. Why do you think he, uh, I, I've been asking this question, I, 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 it's strange to me, not strange to me, I, I mean, because we've heard some really good answers now, Why? But, but why do you think that he has such an appeal for so many Iranians who are mourning his death? This, this Argentinian guy who played in Italy, I mean, what, what, what is the connection? See, it's not to say around the whole world, but I'll put it this way. The soccer is a game that you need a one ball, plastic ball, whatever you can ever play. So I can say it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, uh, white or black. And if you look at the United States, white tennis game always was a white man's game because they, or the hockey, because of the gears, you need to buy it. And some people, they're poor, they cannot get those stuff. But soccer has been around the world is the most popular game because of accessibility and and also, if you look at another angle, look at it in the United States or other countries with the music and singing, and um, you can be famous making money. But the soccer was another glory for the uh, 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 poor peoples, and they were glory to be become famous. Right. So for me, uh, we play uh, on the field and watching him in Iran, and um, again, we always uh, idolize people that we can relate ourselves. For example, what movie can be successful when you can relate yourself to one of the character of that movie so for me as a player i was a tall strong shooter but worse dribbled but watching him it compromised my weakness my <laughs> strength was there right, so right. he compromised my weakness that he was amazing physically and dribbler i was going to ask you i was going to ask you uh, as a player yourself what you think Maradona, made Maradona so special? Well, his, I could, one thing that he was too young to be when he started playing, and uh, uh, when he didn't choose, him, they didn't choose him for the for World Cup um, uh, 76. 78. It was 78. A, 78, yeah. 78. So I, I, it was a, might be a tough, but my opinion, maybe I'm wrong or whatever, I'm not going to be a historian. It helped him grow more. Uh, mature and when he came to sell, it's, it's, uh, uh, on the other full cup, he was a leader of the team, captain, and, and again, he not only he played his game, but he gave that to his team player, uh, his teammates. So he wasn't one of these, like in you know, you see in the United States, some, I, I don't mention the name, they are the star of the game team and they have to give me the ball, I will do the famous, I will be the one, one, one. So, he wasn't. He, and also look at his background. He comes from the country, was poor, under a lot of dictatorship, and then he became a hero of his own people, bringing the glory to country, and especially his game against England. It wasn't a soccer. It was a war between the people of Argentina with England. And he mentioned that one too. And for that reason, a lot of people watched him as a country boy that trying to, with him, to show that we can uh, we can win we can win against you maybe uh, as other aspect you have always won but so there are a lot of things he did his life and his relation with the people make them to who he is right now and people remember him it's interesting because you are a tall guy um nader davudi uh, a little earlier was just saying um maradona even though he was small um football is one of the few sports where that can actually be an advantage because it's all about your feet and you can you can sort of dribble and deke people if you're smaller in a way that um uh you know height is in a game like basketball or many tennis or other sports a, a real advantage um so so it wasn't necessarily an advantage for you to be a tall player, huh? Uh, actually, when I used to watch him, I, it, because those of the people, they wish to be tall. I used to wish to be short because, again, and like exactly you put it in you know, the right word, soccer, it's being tall is good in the corner kick or in some area or defender, but as a, uh, a, a dribbler or the more physically fit for soccer is not for your advantage if you are too tall. But I used, uh, but again, I had a good coaches around me and I used my tall uh, and my strength on my leg because I used to be able to score from far away because of my strength on my leg and I was a good shooter. So 
that was the one of the again you fit yourself in a game right so it's a game it plays 11 players so you cannot be 11 exactly player you have to know where's your position and how you play but again he used to make me jealous that how why i couldn't play <laughs> but i used to be proud that somebody played like that so and i'm watching i'm enjoying the beauty of the game Haas, you know i always love talking to you tell tell me um Tell me before I let you go, do you have a favorite memory if, if you think about the playing career of Maradona um, and as a, as a player yourself, what's, what's your favorite memory of him? Of course, the goal, second goal he scored against England, it was the mind-blowing, it will stay, and I know everybody talks about it, but that watching him and he was, I mean, I'm, I, I have heard other people call him, I call him the poet, poet of the football. He was almost like script himself in that field, take the ball, defend the seven, eight, defend it, and then even dribble the goaler and they score. That's one. But I want to, one thing I have here, I read, I went in Farsi, I'm going to read it if you don't mind. Please. But uh, it's, it's very interesting. Maradona passes Takris as much as a Salamat Ravan in a Gofte. Inja Divan Haya Ziadi Bastari Hastan. Yeki Mijeman Chekawara Hastan. Hame Bavar Mikunan. یکی میگه من گاندی هستم همه باور میکنن اما وقت من بهشون گفتن ماردانا هستن همه به من خندیدن گفتن ندیجه هیچ وقت هیچ چست ماردانا نمیشود <laughs> This is the most beautiful thing today make me smile and emotional but beautiful Chef Zare thank you so much for this today Thank you so much. Always, I hope um, everybody just talk, uh, enjoy the, what he did, legacy, what he left for us, and watch his game. And especially, we have access to all the uh, videos and just learn something from him and have a safe and a good sport in the between us. I know it's Thanksgiving Day there in, in uh, the United States where you uh, live and work. I, I hope uh, it's not too busy a day for you as the, as the great chef, and I, I hope you and, uh, and your friends and family are all well. Thank you so much. The same to you. I wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. I always say that uh, have a, a, a fun safe and delicious day so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you brother bye-bye thank you so much have a wonderful day bye-bye Hus Zareh is an internationally celebrated chef and a former football player for the Iranian national youth team he joined us from San Francisco today This is our Rook special, Remembering Maradona. Remember, for all things Rook, you can head to our website, rookmedia.com. All of our episodes are there, all of our links to our different platforms, and you can become a patron there as well of Rook. My next guest is a broadcaster and football fiend himself. He's also a well-known Iranian-American radio and TV host in the Los Angeles area. He has been a football referee in America for the past 35 years. Hossein Majid joins me from Los Angeles right now. Hello, sir. Hello, and thank you for having me on your show. It's a great pleasure to have you on this program, Hossein. Although uh, under sad circumstances, the, the passing of a legend, I know you've been a, a broadcaster, you've covered sports, you've been involved with the game of football for many years in various ways. What, what did you think of when you first heard of the death of Diego Maradona yesterday? I think we all, a uh, soccer fan or football fan, we were expecting something like this for past um couple of decades and he really abused himself and he really didn't take care of himself as a legend in a soccer world and he could have been amazing and with a great life but I think he didn't take care of himself I remember um, when I was working for the um, for the FIFA World Cup back in in Los Angeles for the men for men's World Cup back in 1994 I remember uh, working on the field for the FIFA as a photo marshal and um, so I remember, and, and Maradona was on um, Argentinian um, squad, but something happened regarding um, doping and other stuff, and he was disqualified middle of the tournament. And I watched him that he's sitting in, the, in a special area. So I saw him, and he started with that. And, 
it was completely different Maradona back in, let's say, 1978 and 1986, when he really, 1986, in Mexico, he, he became one of the best players in the world. And in many, many people's eyes and writers and soccer writers and media. So, but, and he started abusing, so I, I didn't quite understand why he did something like this to himself. And, and uh, as, as Iranian, uh, obviously, like, like America, if you, uh, Julian, if you look at it, like uh, baseball is a national pastime sport, like everybody follow baseball, yes. which I did also for many, many years. I was crazy about baseball. But in Iran, that was uh, like a number one sport that bring people in the stand, and they loved uh, um, soccer, like many, many, many countries around the world. If you're surprised that many Americans not really react to that, so it's not. If it was a Babe Ruth or it was another uh, baseball player, so it obviously would be huge, huge news in America. It still do, but it's not as big as if other parts of the world. It's quite sad to when the, when you know the question is what what's the first thing that you thought of and and you're not the first person to say well frankly I wasn't surprised I thought he was uh, I, I'm I'm surprised he lasted this long in terms of the uh, as you say the abuse of his body in terms of uh, a very unhealthy mm-hmm. lifestyle there are a lot of theories about that one being that Maradona never really fit into a box he was always a a rebel um, Nader Davoudi was saying earlier on this program that that you know he he Maradona never didn't have the pedigree to even understand the kind of celebrity that would be bestowed mm-hmm. upon That's him true. and so couldn't handle mm-hmm. it when it came to him and was always very um you know he was very uh, straight up about who he was uh, and who he was didn't fit into that that kind of box that um, uh, the politically correct you know uh, genteel type of soccer player that is expected in today's world in fact uh, maybe I, I should ask you this do you think Maradona could have even existed as a as a football legend in today's game and uh, you know what I don't think so to my eyes Maradona was not a best soccer player of all time that many people stated. He was not. I mean, he reminds me of George Best, one of the best players in British soccer. And he was, he was amazing. But he also abused himself, and he died early. He was not like, but we have like legend, like let's say David Beckham, and the Charlton's brothers, Bobby Moore, who passed away many years, a few years ago, and Johan Cruyff, and your, or Cruyff, when we said in Iran. There's so many, so many, Messi and uh, Ronaldo and we go back, Pushkash and and all those players, great players that really showed that their image, kept their image up for people, for their fans. But Maradona, I think he took everything for granted. He took everything for granted. He didn't take care of himself. Uh, drug and uh, and uh, and diets and uh, so he got many many times in trouble for the tax tax um, evasion stuff and so many other things. And he really didn't think you are Maradona. You can you can have a great life for many many years. Obviously, people around him around him didn't take care of him care of him but didn't care about him how do you in maradona's defense how do you i mean yes he said the thing about napoli not being part of italy and you know he he would stoke tensions but but how do you deal with the kind of pressure that was put on him i mean especially in italy when he was playing there and things started to go sour yeah. after mm-hmm. 1990 yeah. no one could have survived sure. that yeah I know it, pressure was too much pressure for the player, for great players. When they did the end of their career, they move on to other countries. Like a lo- lot of re- big players come to play for MLS, and some make, some they don't make. Uh, but players should understand their position for their fan and around the world to take care of themselves. And so, but he didn't. And rebels, there was a good thing to say about Maradona. He was uh, he was like. Five four, and he was small player on the field, and he 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 was a great player. As I said, to my eyes, no, he was not the greatest, but he was one of the great player uh, existed. But then we all got this uh, so disappointed. 
You know, you know, you'll upset a lot of people who are listening by comparing uh, Maradona to Beckham, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they elevate I mean, Maradona to another level, I, I, you know. Uh, well, don't worry, they get over with it. So, don't worry. <laughs> uh, don't yeah. give them my address, okay? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's it. It's. I guess it's refreshing <laughs> that we brought someone on who actually doesn't doesn't think Maradona was was so great. I mean, so even in his prime, that period, that magical period from say uh-huh. eighty four to to ninety, when you know, including the World Cup and the goal of the century, and and you know, mm-hmm. bringing championships to Napoli, um, you wouldn't you wouldn't say that what he did there was legendary. Yeah, it was it was great. It was 1986 in Mexico where uh, where Iran didn't participate. But let me add one thing here, Jean. Uh, I must mention um, mention one of the greatest uh, referee of um, all time, uh, Jafar Namdar. Uh, that the first referee who did medal in the World Cup. Yes. Jafar Namdar participated alongside Iran. That was, Iran was qualified for, for um, in 1978, which Argentina also won the World Cup. Uh, Iran, um, just um, the best, uh, best result they got, it was 1-1 with Scotland. And, um, but Jafar Namdar was, uh, did a couple of games in the middle, and he passed away a few years ago. He was one of the greatest play, uh, soccer um, the referee. But after that, uh, we had others that um, and they participated in few World Cups. They were great. You see, I have a theory about your opinion of Maradona. Do you want to hear my theory? Uh-huh. My, sure. my, my theory is that you're a referee. And you've been a referee mm-hmm. for 35 years. Sure. And, and so you're still angry at Maradona for the hand of God. Uh, <laughs> you, you haven't forgiven him for the, the hand of God goal, that the goal that he scored in 86 with his hand and, and mm-hmm. the referee mm-hmm. missed it. And uh, uh, what, is, what is your take on that as somebody who has to referee games and has no doubt uh, heard from all sides uh, disappointment and elation depending on the decisions you make on, on the pitch? Uh, obviously, back then, uh, back then there was not any like technology for the replay, you know, all this stuff that referee could go VAR, you know, all this stuff. So obviously, there was anything like that. We learned in the many, many classes we attend. We learned we must blow the whistle when we are 100% sure if there is a foul. No doubtful calls. So referee makes this split split of second decision in all discretions of the referee and his assistant to make the call. Sometimes I I don't want, I don't want to say that anybody hear this part, okay? <laughs> but sometimes sometimes not me, remember, some referee get that kind of emotional sometimes the atmosphere maybe um, affect them psychologically maybe it's a so difficult game with the 100,000. It was 114,000 people in the stand when that happened. So that could be affected, but I don't want to say that 100%. But it does affect on us as a referee. Uh, that's what we go through so many trains. Yeah, and he, re- the happened, r- referee Ruhish Nemi Omad he couldn't, he wouldn't, he w- w- didn't have the the balls, so to speak, to say to say uh, <laughs> no, 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 uh, he say didn't that. score. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that, right. and never say something like that. Um, but uh, what I'm saying is, referee was not hundred percent sure there was a handball. Hmm. Nobody still does. This is the great. Uh, unknown story. Okay, it's like it's like when the when the England won won the World Cup back in 1966, and the ball crossed the uh, crossed the line, goal line or not, uh, during the game between England and Germany. And so, still that unknown that when the when the Germany won the World Cup, an assistant referee and uh, said it was a goal, but but Germans claim that it would never cross the goal line. Right. So these things happen, and it happens. I have done thousands of games, and it could happen, but we learn, don't blow the whistle. If you're not 110% sure that there is an infraction happened. 
I'm still running with my theory that you're angry at Maradona for scoring that goal. No, why and angry? It, because angry you're a referee. A smart <laughs> he was a smart player. If he could fool me, he was a smart player. Uh, l- let me ask you. I mean, you you talked about Iranians being football lovers. We all know that. And uh, but 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 yeah. you know, I I have to say. I mean, I um, yesterday throughout the day, I've mentioned this a couple times on this program. My social media feeds were in terms of the Iranians uh, that I, were were filled with images of Maradona. This, and uh, talking to Nader earlier, who was in Tehran, saying that this is huge news in Iran. Can I mean, is it just that he was an extraordinary player um, and that Iranians love football? Or is there something more about um, the legacy of Maradona being the best player in the world at a dark time in Iran, whether it was war or disparity, etc., and people could look to okay. him as some sort of escape? Let, let me make more people angry, okay? Okay. Let me make more right. people angry. <laughs> we, we are beloved the country of Iran, and I love Iranian because I, I work with Iranian, and I love them so much. I love my country, everything. Even I love you, Jian, with, with your opinion. Even, okay. okay. Yes, all right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. But let me tell you, we are master of posting a post on a social media as soon as someone dies. <laughs> Okay. All right. So it, it's not, no it doesn't question. mean anything. <laughs> we are want to beat each uh, the one next door by posting it right away. Someone passed away. Oh, St. John. Uh, Ponta, Ponta, the artist who works on this show, Ponta, who, one of the people, <laughs> said she went home last night and her aunt, who's uh, a, a young woman, uh, was, was in tears crying. She said, why are you crying? She said, because Maradona died. I mean, they... Oh, they no, I- the, the, it, it did have an effect on people. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, but again, I want to disagree with that. <laughs> okay, I, I have right. to see that lady crying before I believe it, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> you really know. you really don't like Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> I really have to have a clip or a, a video or something like that to believe you. You, know? you need okay. to see no, her crying. Uh, no, all right, yeah. I know people people love many many thousands of soccer players. Everybody has a favorite, and, and now uh, and everything, but. But crying, I don't understand. I think maybe someone in Buenos Aires crying, I understand. Okay? Someone is a fan of Boca Jr. crying, I understand. Uh, but if this one, like when Nasser Hijazi passed away, so it was, it, that was a big thing. Crying was, I understood, when, when Humayun Bessadi passed away. And so many of our great, Mustafa Arab, and so many of our great, great prayer passed away early or later in life with so many, so many great memories. But, but hang, hang, hang the, on, hang on a second. Let me, let me give this one more college try here. You're a football okay. fan, right? I mean, you're not just you're a referee. Sure you're a huge football fan. If yeah. and and you agree, I mean, let's just say FIFA called Maradona. I mean, along with Pele, the greatest player of the 20th century. So, as a mm-hmm. football fan, you've you've conceded that you think he was a great player. As a football fan, is it not sad that the that the greatest one of the greatest players ever has now has passed away that his life has has been terminated is that not a cause for sadness it is amazing sad is so sad okay. i am um, i want to see maradona be an ambassador, ambassador of the soccer around the world okay. for the kids for the young people be a good role model and those are the things that i'm upset about maradona didn't think about that so many millions of kids looked up to him and he was a role model and then those kids were disappointed those kids were disappointed so i know fifa has so many awards so many things they give and and yes if fifa says he's the greatest player what he did in mexico it was amazing with the two goals he scored against england and 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 with one man squad he won the world cup for the for argentina uh, but yeah, he was a great. But my my thing is, he, he the way he lived his life, yes. he disappointed us and many many young people. What do you think? Uh, a final question to you. Uh, you've made your feelings clear. What what do you think his his legacy will be? His legacy, I think, for for now on, I think people really will forget about 
some people are mad how he took care of him. So why did he, he's gone so fast and so quickly? Why is um, he's not anymore? It, even though when he was past couple decades or maybe 10 years, he was in, in not in good shape. And people all just just being so so sad to see their hero being like that. This is the thing that I don't understand. As, as a sports figure... Uh, as a politics figure, as a as an entertainment figure, we have a responsibility for our community, for our country, for our young people to looking up to us. To I hope his fan doesn't get upset about what I'm saying, but I'm well, well they you, will, they they will, but it's uh, but, 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 on, but let me change. My name is not Hossein no, Majid. Remember, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's a, it's refreshing to hear a different point of view because actually we have heard the opposite um, so far on this program, which is that okay. we should really separate whatever his personal troubles and his demons and his difficulties were mm-hmm. and celebrate yeah. this guy as a football player. You're saying for you, you can't separate those two things, and that's okay. That's what I, I, I yeah. think I disagree with you, but I, I appreciate mm-hmm. your point of view. And honestly, what is the best email or phone number for people who are angry to get in touch with you? Because if you- <laughs> okay. yeah, I give you I give you my email with the, with the wrong thing spelling okay <laughs> listen man uh it's a great pleasure to talk to you uh i appreciate you your insights much. and i appreciate your um iconoclastic uh, approach to this uh this one and i hope we get to talk again soon sure Jean, let me add one quick thing please beside outside of the sport and outside the soccer and uh, maradona you're a great host okay one great broadcast is said said if a host agree with if there his guests agree with his view his job is finished <laughs> well if you say you're right you're right you're right <laughs> then his job is finished this is what you're doing a great job to give your point of view and to make this make interview interesting Thank you, sir. You're very kind. You're welcome. And uh, I, I, I will not say you're right because then I would be, my job would be finished. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, much check good, in. good broadcast, sir. <laughs> Talk soon, brother. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And um, wish everybody uh, a great year. Hope we get through this amazing and the amazing, amazing and the bad side. Yes, uh, and I know you're in you're in Los Angeles, and it's a you're in the states, and it's a Thanksgiving there. So happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Yeah, as well. thank you very much. Today actually, today is actually I'm talking with you. Happy is the Thanksgiving, and I wish the health and happiness, and hopefully this Corona and COVID nineteen. I think I have to say by 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 winter of next year, 2021, this will be completely gone, and next month the the vaccine is going to be start working for some. Uh, in, in America. We're going to bring you on for the um, Remembering the Pandemic show in which you will you yeah. will take a contrarian view of celebrating the pandemic because it didn't abuse itself. How's that? Remember, your children are going to read in school before Corona and after Corona. That's true. Like That's true. before 9-11 and after 9-11. Uh, I, I that, well, you know, actually, you were gonna. One of the things that you've you've talked about, I I shouldn't. Uh, I, we've already said mm-hmm. our goodbyes, but you 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 were talking about um, when I was talking to you earlier. You were talking about how f- you divide football in Iran from before revolution and after revolution, right? I, I do, I do. It's like I'm not alone, and now that I'm before revolution and after revolution, erg meldi besiar besiar balatar bud baray team meldi va football dar Iran. Ta in ke in in when when the, all these big huge salaries and players are working with the huge salary and they have to be careful, you know, all this stuff. Uh, but before, when there was no money so much involved in Iran, it was a it was the nationalism was so high for the team Meli with the small stadium like Amjadi, it was like thirty thousand people would sit in it. But they still, we love our. Team MLD, we love our soccer, we love our, all the clubs in Iran. It's a great thing to watch, and we hope Iran make it to the Qatar 2022. Hossein Majid, uh, the great referee, I thank you so much for this today, sir. Thank you. Remember, when you see a referee, go there, shake his hand, say, great job. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 
Hossein Majid is a radio and TV broadcaster and has been a football referee, as you just heard, in America for the past 35 years. He joined us from Los Angeles today. This is our Rook special, Remembering Maradona, coming to you on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud, and Telegram. Well, our final guest is a registered psychologist with a specialty in family and sports psychology from Tehran. He helps professional athletes enhance their performance and concentration, increase their motivation and self-esteem, overcome anxiety, cope with pressures of competition, and recover from injuries. Dr. Khosro Hamzeh is the psychologist to the National Omid football team of Iran. He has been the psychologist to Iran's Olympic teams in Beijing 2008, as well as the Asian Olympic teams in 2010 and 2018. And he is the author of the recent book, The Miracle of Mind, about the champion mindset required to reach the podium. Dr. Khosro Hamzeh joins me from Chicago today. Hello, sir. سلام روز بخیر خیلی متشکرم از اینکه من رو به برنامه دعوت کردیم و خوشحالم که با شما صحبت می‌کنم منم خوشحالم خیلی هم متشکر هستم thank you so much for coming on the show doctor uh, i'm going to call you khosro cuz you said i could <laughs> you um <laughs> you you have been involved with football in all kinds of ways throughout your career and and you still are let, let me first ask you this what what was your reaction when you heard the news of the passing of uh, the legend Diego Maradona yesterday? فکر کنم اولین واکنشی که داشتم این بود که بسیار بسیار متاسف شدم از اینکه مارادونا رو از دست دادیم برای اینکه به حال اون یه قهرمانی بود که برای همه ما یه حس نزدیکی ایجاد می‌کرد یعنی همه ما احساس می‌کردیم با اینکه اون رو هرگز ندیدیم از نزدیک ولی انگار بسیار زیاد اون رو می‌شناختیم و در خاطرات همه ما نقش داشت با این حال من خیلی شاک نشدم از شنیدن این خبر چون با توجه به اطلاعاتی که از سبک زندگی و مشکلاتش در سالهای آخر زندگیش وجود داشت پیش بینی می‌کردم که دیر یا زود متأسفانه به این نقطه برس. You know, it's interesting that your latest book is about the mindset of sport champions because Maradona, uh, from my point of view, would almost seem to be the gold standard for someone who is known to have willed his entire national team into victory at times with his steel mindset, if not for Napoli in the 1980s. What, from your perspective, made him the champion? What, what was that mindset that you speak about in your book that uh, dovetailed with Maradona in the 1980s? من فکر می‌کنم که اول خوب در پاسخ به سوال شما به این اشاره بکنم که ما وقتی راجع به مایندست قهرمان‌ها صحبت می‌کنیم یا منتال پریپریشنشون صحبت می‌کنیم این رو از سبک زندگیشون بعد از اون چیزی که دوران قهرمانیشون به پایان می‌رسه متفاوت بدید در دوران قهرمانی حالا در مورد مارادونا اگر به طور خاص صحبت بکنیم این آدم به غیر از اینکه ویژگی‌های داشتی در واقع در واقع مادرزادی خداداد بود یعنی گاد گیفتد بود بهش که مثلا هوش خیلی زیاد تکنیکی که به هر حال میتونست به شکل فوق العاده و عجیبی ازش استفاده بکنه یک سرعت خیلی زیادی که در اجرای تکنیکش داشت و البته اللهاز مسائل مرتبط با مسائل ذهنی و شخصیتی یک در واقع منتال هاردینسی که داشت برای جنگجو بودن و ادامه دادن تا آخرین لحظه و برتری طلبی که در شخصیتش در مسابقات ورزشی بود و این خیلی به آن چیزی که مارادونا رو مارادونا کرد کمک کرد و اینها رو اگر بخوایم بهش نگاه بکنیم اون اتفاقاتی که در جام جهانی 86 میفته در اینکه یک در یک جام جهانی یک بازیکن تا این اندازه به تنهایی تاثیر گذار میتونه باشه yeah. گرچه که فوتبال یک ورزش تیمی هست و به هر حال یک نفره نیست اما اثر مارادونا در قهرمانی آرژانتین در 86 یک اثر بیبدیلی بود و یه چیزی بود که شاید تا سالها کسی دیگه نباشه به تنهایی انقدر تحصیل گذار در سهرمانی بشه همینطور در مورد ناپولی که شما بهش اشاره میکنین به این توجه کنین که ناپ یک شهر به هر حال جنوبی ایتالیا و تا حدودی شهر, شهر فقیری است و سابقه فوتبالی اونها زیاد قنی نبوده در اون دوران تا زمانی که مارادونا به اونجا بیاد 
در اون دوران اگه خاطرمون باشه باشگاه های ایتالیا میتونستن سه بازیکن خارجی بگیرن و تیم های متمولتر و پولدارتر فوتبال ایتالیا مثلا آسه میلان سه بازیکن از هلند گرفتن که این بازیکن ها اگه خاطرمون باشه رود گولیف، مارکوفان باسن و فرانک رای کارت بودن و باز اینتر میلان رقیب دیگه به حال متمول لیگ ایتالیا کالشیو اونها سه بازیکن آلمانی گرفتن که آندرس برمل، لوزار ماتئوس و کلینزمن بودن آه. و به نظر می اومد که اینها یک قدرت خیلی خاصی دارن با اون پیشینه و اینکه بسیاری از ملی پوشان فوتبال ایتالیا تو این تیم ها بازی میکردن اما ناپولی اومد مارادونا رو گرفت و در کنارش کاراکا و آلماو رو گرفت و در واقع اینها از یک تیم ضعیف و از خاک برخواسته یک قهرمان در قامت قهرمان کالچیو و البته قهرمان یوفا ساختن که این هم به محبوبیت مارادونا بسیار کمک کرد به خاطر اینکه یک چیزی رو که از ابتدا قوی نبوده رو تبدیل به یک در واقع تیم قوی کرد و اینها هر کدومش به جای خودش باعث میشه که جا به جا در ذهن علاقمندان فوتبال جای به خصوصی داشته You know, the, the, that all makes a lot, a lot of sense. One of the things that has been really interesting in the journey through this program and in the preparation for it is speculating on why there is a connection for Iranians uh, and people of Iranian descent with Maradona. Because on the face of it, of, co- of course, it seems almost absurd. He's an Argentinian guy. He grew up in Argentina. He played in Italy for most of his career. Why would Iranians feel this kind of um, affinity for this guy? And I want to ask you this question, not just of Iranians in general, but um, Iranian football players who you have worked with and um, and, and, and known for many years. Uh, what was the effect of Maradona? And why is there... If if we are to believe our social media feeds and um, and the media in general, the amount of of sadness, the amount of reaction we see from the global Iranian community and those even in Iran to the death of Maradona, why is there this connection to this man? اینو من تقسیم میکنم به دو بخش بر مورد اول بازیکنان فوتبال که خب من این شانس داشتم که با بسیار از بازیکنان ملی پوش ایران آشنا بودم و همکاری کردم و هم صحبت بودم و میدونم که وقتی از بهترین بازیکن دنیا ها از اینا سوال میشه در اینی که بازیکن های بزرگی مثل رونالدینی و مثل رونالدو مسی و فیگو و زیدان رو اشاره میکنم ولی وقتی به مارادونا میرسن میگن بعد از مارادونا یعنی مارادونا یه جایگاه دیگه ای داره از لحاظ از لحاظ فوتبالی انگار مارادونا یه جای دیگری قرار داره و بقیه بزرگان دنیا از مثلا دو طبقه یا دو کاتگوری پایین تر قراره که دیده بشن و این یه چیزیه که من فکر میکنم فقط مسائل فنی مارادونا مربوط نیست که حالا در ادامه توضیحش بازم خواهم داد که چرا اینجوری بود اما در مورد مردم چی چرا مردم ایران انقدر در واقع مارادونا رو دوست داشتن این به چیزای مختلفی رفت داره یه قسمتش من میخوام به این در واقع توجه بدم شما رو که فوتبال بازی بسیار پرهیجانی اولا فوتبال بازی ساده و قابل فهمیه به عنوان مثال مثلا بسکتبال هم خیلی زیباست یا مثلا واتر پولو هم خیلی زیباست ولی به اندازه فوتبال برای بیننده قابل فهم نیست و چون به اون اندازه قابل فهم نیستن همه اون هیجان رقابت رو درک نمیکنن شاید اصلا این یکی از دلایل اصلی است که فوتبال امروز در دنیا تبدیل به یک پدیده به این بزرگی شده با این همه در واقع مخاطب حالا این قسمت هیجانی که در فوتبال وجود داره و زیبایی فوتبال رو ایجاد میکنه در کشوری مثل کشور ما که اتفاقا ما مردم احساساتی و هیجانی داریم البته این فقط خصوصیت مردم ما نیست به نظر میاد بسیاری از کشورهایی که در نیمکره های جنوبی وجود دارن مثلا مثل کشورهای آمریکای لاتین یا حتی به جنوب اروپا رو مگه نگاه بکنیم تا حدود این خصوصیت های اخلاقی و هیجانی و احساسی رو دارن و این جور در واقع ملل و این جور اقوام لذت بیشتری از دیدن و تجربه کردن بازی های پر هیجان دارن این در کل فوتبال هست حالا وقتی به مارادونا می رسیم بریم ببینیم که مارادونا جان جان چه زمانی فوتبال بازی می کرده این بیشترین زمانی که دوران اوجش بوده در دهه هشتاد میلادی یا تقریبا دهه شست شمسی ایران بوده right. ما داریم راجب زمانی صحبت می کنیم که در ایران جنگ وجود داشته تلویزیون ها بسیار بسیار برنامه محدودی داشتن کلا جامعه ایران علاوه فرهنگی و سطح تفریات اینا به شدت بسته تر بود شاید اون موقع فوتبال ارزشش در جهت ایجاد هیجان مثبت و تفریح و خوشی 
و هر چیزی که تو اون کاتگوری بگنجه یک ارزش یونیکی به حساب می آمد و حالا در اون دورانی که ما داریم به این ارزش یونیک توجه می کنیم بزرگترین بازیکن دوران مارادونایی است که اتفاقا زیبا بازی می کنه بسیار تکنیکی است و یه چیزی توی مارادونا بود که من تا به امروز در بازیکن دیگری در فوتبال در بازیکن بزرگ هرگز ندیدم این احساس و شوری که مارادونا در چهرش در بازی در زمین فوتبال نشون میداد مارادونا چهره نسبتا معصومی داشت صورت معصومی داشت و بعد در مورد بادی لنگویج شما میدیدیم که وقتی با داور صحبت میکنه وقتی یه صحنه توپی رو از دست میدن وقتی که مثلا در جام جهانی 90 اون پنالتی رو در دقیقه 81 بر علیهشون گرفتن در بازی آلمان در فینال و yeah. جام قهرمانی رو از دستن گریه هایی که گوشه زمین yeah. میکرد yes. و نوع نوع واکنش های احساسی و هیجانیش رو مردم در ایران به شدت دوست داشتن و yes. فکر که این خیلی خودشه No one has mentioned this yet today, but he was very visceral. You always saw what this man was feeling. His anger, I mean, to to, to his final days, even recently, when he's, or or he'd be crying, or he'd be (laughs) elated. I mean, he wore his emotions very openly, yes? دقیقا همینطوره یعنی واقعا و اینه که چیزایی بود که در مورد پذیرش این آدم برای جامعه ایرانی اثر چندگانه داشت و حال یه نکته شم این هستش که انسان ها همه از جمله ایرانی ها فرق نمی کنه در سراسر سر دنیا انسان هم زیبایی دوسته هم قدرت دوسته خب زیبایی که زیبایی هایی که در فوتبال وجود داشت قسمت بزرگش رو در اون دوران مارادونا با سبک بازیش ایجاد میکرد و قدرت مظاهر چیه؟ یکی از مظاهر قدرت شهرته یکی از مظاهر قدرت برتری ایجاد کردنه ایشون چون موفق می شد که بتونه در واقع این برتری ها رو تو بازی ایجاد بکنه این هم به محبوبیتش کمک می کنه اما یه نکته دیگه جیان جان و اون نکته مربوط به اینه که مارادونا قولکش بود این قول کش بودن منظور اینه که میتونست بر تیم هایی که خیلی به شکل سنتی بزرگتر و قوی تر هستن قلبه بکنه و این تقیانش و قلبه کردن بر اونها برای مردمی از طبقات متوسطتر و شاید ضعیفتر همواره اینو جذاب تر میکرد مثلا اگر لوتار ماتوس اون دوران میخواست اینطوری بازی کنه که مثلا از کشور آلمان آمده یا مثلا میشل پلاتینی که خب اون هم در اون دوران بازیکن فوق العاده تاپی بود اما از فرانسه آمده هیچ کدوم این اثر رو مردم نمیدونستن داشته باشن که مارادونا از یک کشور امریکایی لاتین با یک سطح به حال شاید فرهنگی و مالی ضعیفتر و با این در واقع سختی ها بالا آمده و مردم اینو بسیار دوست داشتن You know, maybe it's related to all of that and certainly related to how he wore those emotions very openly Um, he he was tremendously self-destructive. That's the other thing we've been talking about throughout this program. He had a terrible downfall from grace over the last three decades. Um, uh, we've talked about some of that, and frankly, the different guests have had, uh, um, uh, you know, we just had Hossein Majid on saying, I can't see this guy as a legend because of the ab- abuse that he, he gave his own body for the last uh, 30 years. And it's, it's a bad example for young children mm-hmm. and people who want to play football. Everyone else, of course, has said, you've got to set aside his personal demons and look at what he did on the pitch and who he was. But... Can you um, can you speculate as a fan, as a doctor, as a psychologist about what happened to Maradona in his final years and where this self abuse would come from? Well, we can be interested in the fact that the Qahramanah is not just the Qahramanah. The Qahramanah is not 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 the بنابراین وقتی که قهرمان ها دارن به دوران ریتایرمنت نزدیک میشن حتما باید در لحاظ روانی آمادگی هایی داشته باشن که با این در واقع از بیرون دیده شدن از میدان فوتبال و دیگه اون شهرت یه مقدار افت میکنه اون توجه روزمره نیست و حالا باید سبک زندگی وجود داشته باشه و لایف استایلی باید باشه که کمک کنه این آدم بتونه در این اینکه مثبت باقی میمونه سالم هم باقی بمونه این یکی از نقاط ضعف قطعی مارادونا بود که مارادونا به نظر میاد برای این موضوع زیاد کلنی نچیده بود و البته یه نکته دیگه هم که وجود داره که این در فوتبال جیان عزیز خیلی برجسته است فوتبال اجازه میده که ورزشگارای نونهال یا نوجوان و جوان 
بعد از اینکه یه مقدار دیده شدن به یک باره یه رشد عظیم و انفجاری در شرایط مالیشون و شرایط شهرتشون رخ بده معمولا شخصیت اینها برای رشد کردن جا میمونه عقب میفته از این رشد در واقع شهرت و ثروتشون و وقتی هم که به شهرت میرسن و خیلی مورد توجه هستن کمتر ورزشکار و کمتر فوتبالیست بوده که بفهمه که باید شخصیتش رو در برابر این موضوع همزمان رشد بده right. و این کارو نکرد من میخوام اگر امکانش باشه یه اشاره به بکن بایر بکنم یه مثال متفاوتیه و دقیقا در نقطه مقابل sure. ما, هم، ما همه میدونیم که بکن بایر لقبی داره به نام کایزر یا قیصر در فوتبال آلمان که هم به سبک بازیش در دفاع وسط به عنوان یه لیبرو اطلاق شده و البته یه چیز دیگه هم داره که بیش از اینه شما میدونیم که آلمان ها کشوری هستن که صاحب فرهنگ خیلی قوی هستن برترین فلاسفه دنیا مثل نیچه مثل هایدگر از آلمان آمدن موسیقی منهای بزرگ مثل باخ اومده اونجا مثل بتوون بوده ولی به هیچ کدوم از اونا گفته نشده کایزر <تصفيق> یا قیسه ولی به در بکن بایر گفته شده چرا؟ در این که بکن بایر در تمام دوران اوجش وقتی که فینال جام جهانی 66 رو بازی میکنه وقتی که فینال جام جهانی 74 رو به عنوان کاپیتان میبره وقتی که 1972 یورو رو میبره به عنوان کاپیتان آلمان و سه بار قهرمان بایر اروپا میشن با بایر مونیخ یعنی در اوج شهرت در اوج ثروت در اوج توجه تشخیص میده که من به عنوان یه جوانی که به این موفقیت ها رسیدم هنوز چیزایی تو شخصیتم ضعیفه ایشون حتی میره معلمای استخدام میکنه که بهش اتیکت یاد بدن آداب معاشرت رو بهتر بهش یاد بدن رفتار رو بهش یاد بدن در واقع این آدم رو رشد شخصیتیش سرمایه گذاری میکنه و این چیزیست که مارادونا و خیلی از این مارادونا ها اصلا تو زندگیشون براش برنامه و پلنی نداشتن و یه موضوع دیگه اینه که وقتی که قهرمان ها بزرگ میشن که ما این مشکل رو جان جان با در ایران هم داریم من به عنوان آدمی که خب نزدیک هستم به قهرمان های کشور مدرشت های مختلفه و کار کردم در تیمای متفاوت اینو دیدم که وقتی یه قهرمان معروف میشه حالا مورد توجه هست تعداد زیادی آدم دور اینا جمع میشه که اونها دوست دارن کنار این قهرمان ها دیده بشن عکسی داشته باشن بگن این دوست ماست ما با این حرف میزنیم با این بیرون میریم اما خب موضوع اینجاست که منفعت اون قهرمان برای این آدم ها این استش که کنار اینها دیده بشه اما منفعت قه... قهرمان از کنار اینها باید چه منفعتی ببره معمولا اینها برای اینکه خودشون رو برای قهرمان ها جذاب جلوه بدن و جذاب باشن اینها رو میبرن مهمونی ها فقط که زندگی رو عوض میکنن به خوشگذرانی های خاص اینها رو وارد میکنن که اون وقت این دقیقا اون نقطه است که مرادونا روش لطمه خورد حتی در دوران بازیگریش و در واقع اعتیاد مانادونا به کوکائین اگر رخ نمیداد ما با چیز دیگری از مانادونا روبرو بودیم خود مانادونا گفته بود اگر من مانادونا اگر من کوکائینی نمیشدم چه بازیکنی میشدم right, 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 right. و ولی یه چیز جالبیه یو نو وین یو تاک اباوت دا فکت دت کمپیر تو بکباور اور مانی ادرز هی دیدنت پلی بای دا رولز هی دیدنت بیکام دا گراند استیتسمن هی دیدنت هی ایزنت پله یو نو ان دا ان دات سنس One thing when we started off this program with Mehrdad Ahmadpour, uh, who is a, a soccer analyst and a, a passionate about the game, and, and he was passionate about Maradona. He talked about uh, loving him as a little kid when he was in Rasht and learned of, uh, in the 80s, learned of Maradona. He said, he speculated that Iranians like the rebels. That there's something mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. us that sometimes like the iconoclasts, the types that will actually go against the grain. And the fact that Maradona was like this, even what led to the self-destructive behavior, etc., that inside us, and I'm of course speaking to you not only as a fan now, but in your capacity as a psychologist, that inside us, we were... he was living a lifestyle that we would almost want to live that he would when he's pushing him back against the system and being a rebel that we actually love that about him what do you think of that that and having has agar khatirtun bashe man tu sohbatam az yek kalame istifade kardam kardam qulkosh gustam un qulkosh bud dar vaqt nishane hamin in tuqiyangarish va in shurishi ke bar alayhe dar vaqt 
قویترها انجام میداد تو شخصیتش و این تو تیمای مختلفی دیده شده دیگه دیدیم که با تیمای کوچیک میتونه این کار رو انجام بده و حتی شاید همون اتفاق در بازی آرژانتین و انگلستان در جام جهانی 86 در کوارتر فاینال رخ داد یه نمادی از همین باشه right. خب میدونیم که ما با فاصله سه یا چهار سال قبل از اون در جنگ جزایر فاکلند و به زن آرژانتینیا جزایر مالدیناس به هر حال آرژانتینیا شکست خوردن از انگلستان نسبتا هم این شکست شکستی بود که غرور ملی اونها رو جریه دار کرد در واقع نوع بازی که با انگلستان کردن و اون پیروزی با اون دو گل خاص بهترین گل تاریخ جام جهانی که از دریب زدن از نیمه زمین آغاز شد تا داخل دروازه پیتر فیلتون و اون گلی که به عنوان دست خدا ازش اسپورت در واقع هر دوی اینها با هم دیگه باعث شد که یک قدرت یک ابرقدرت یک نیروی برتری مغلوب شورش و تقیان فوتبالی یک بازیکن بزرگ بشه که اینم برای خیلی از مردم زیبا و دوست داشتنی بود. A final question to you. Uh, what, what do you quite simply uh, given the controversy uh, off the pitch uh, and sometimes on the pitch with the hand of God etc etc. Uh, um, there's no question he was a legend. What do you think his Uh, legacy will be do, how do you believe that maradona will be viewed years from now ma fikr kanam ke maradona ala raghm in ke alaz akhlaqi mushkilat ziyadi dash va payan zindagi zindagi khub va khushi nabud kama in ke qahramanay dige ham qabl az un mesel in budan vali be khater an chizi ke dar zamin futbal anjam dad be khater un hame khateray zibayi ke baraye alaqmandan futbal sakht be khater un raftar ghayr muntazare ke az khodesh dash ke dar vaqe chizi ro an پنهان نمیکرد میتوش همه ببینن اون چیزی که فکر میکنه و اون عشقی که در بازی در فوتبال از خودش نشون میداد همیشه با اینها در ذهن مردم باقی خواهند بود من فکر میکنم که ایشون شاید یه شخصیت بشه به اندازه شباهت های زیادی برای مردم شبیه محمد علی کلی داره در ایران حالا نمیدونم شما آخرین باری که در ایران بودین کی بوده ولی وقتی کلی محمد علی کلی فوت کرد در ایران باورتون شاید نشه که تعداد زیادی از باشگاه های ورزشی در سراسر سر کشور برای کلی هجله زدن این هجله هایی که برای مرگ میزنن و عکس اون کسی که فوت کرده میزنن که مردم بیا مثلا ببینن و متاثر بشن در که کلی که اصلا نه ایرانی بوده یک بار فقط به ایران اومده نی یک همچین محبوبیتی به فکر در مورد مارادونا مینسه تا سالهای سال و تا جایی که اون افراد مارادونا رو دیدن What a beautiful and poetic way to to end these interviews, uh, Dr. Khosro Hamza. I I'm so grateful to you. What tremendous insights, uh, and I I can only thank you so much for being part of this today. خیلی متشکرم منم خیلی خوشحال شدم که تونستم در برنامه شما باشم و برایتون آرزو موفقیت میکنم. I hope to talk to you again soon. Merci va خدا فس. قربانی شما خدا بیار. Dr. Khosro Hamza is a psychologist to the National Omid football team of Iran. His latest book is called The Miracle of Mind. He joined us from Chicago today. Thank you. Uh, I see you've turned on your microphone. Yes. Um, that was quite a, a series of interviews. Yes, and I love all those interviews. Uh, I have. I love that they disagree with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, I have to say that uh, the World Cup 1986. That's the year that I was born. Yes. And in June, also, I was born in. I, yeah. I, I believe they held the World Cup in honor of your birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no, but I, I um I have I haven't thought about this um, idea that. Yes, it's true because I I I thought yesterday and today that why Maradona is huge for Iranian. Yes, and that's true because it's in the middle of war and on the TV they see a guy who looks like Iranians and who who, re- who yes. yeah who yes. has a rebel. Uh, I think between Mehrdad Ahmadpour. Uh, and Nader and uh, and Dr. Khosrow Hamza, they really brought that point home. Yes. That and actually, Chef uh, Chef uh, Zara is, uh, did as well. Yeah. Um, Hossein didn't agree necessarily, no. and in fact, I don't think he agrees that even a, a, that that Maradona is a great, um, you know, important to Iranians. But yeah. 
I saw you smiling when he was talking. <laughs> Reza, you like that, I huh? I like the guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like the guy, too. I don't agree with him, but I like... But, but you know, he, I mean, he's like, you know, no, Irania has just put the picture of whoever's yeah. died and try to get behind it, you know, but, but I don't think that's true. I mean, I think... Uh, I, we have to get Ponta the artist. Is, is, yeah. We should get uh, ask her if there is video of her mom cry, aunt crying. <laughs> aunt, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for all of your work. Thanks to our whole team. This is full time for Rook for today. Uh, thank you to all of you who've been listening to this. If you're first timers to Rook, thank you for coming aboard and hope you will support us and share our content. Subscribe and come back for more our website is rookmedia.com rookmedia.com on all of our socials we're at rook media thanks to the amazing team who put this show together uh producer susan parts of the artist thoughtful Nagin, the fabulous keon savvy roham english muhammad captain reza and groovy shaya thanks to all of our guests who came on the program today on such short notice find me on instagram at gian gomeshi and as ever be sure to heed these words, Mizun Bashin.